All right, in this lecture, we're going to talk about an introduction and mastery of the physical exam, which of course is extremely important because the physical exam is going to take up a good chunk of your entire encounter. So some of the questions that we need to answer in this lecture include, what's the goal of the physical exam? What should always be done? What does a focused exam actually mean? Let's break down the physical exam. Let's discuss how to know which physical exam to perform, which is a huge area of trouble for students, simply not knowing what to do in certain circumstances. And I'm gonna really clarify this and make it really easy for you. We're gonna talk about documenting your findings and then what to do for each exam. Now, the goal of the physical exam is to get more information. So we got a lot of information during the history and based on some of the history information, we're going to perform a physical exam. Now the physical exam should be done to get more information about the information you gathered during the history. So if the patient has abdominal pain, the physical exam should be focused on getting more information specifically about the type of pain, the quality, um, is it elicited when you palpate, um, any different bowel sounds, things like that. Now, one thing that I wanna talk about before we move forward is mastering the art of draping. Now, you're going to see during the physical exam videos how draping should be done and some tricks to help you prevent any unwanted side effects from improper draping, such as accidentally grazing the patient, let's say a female patient accidentally grazing a breast, or um, just making them feel uncomfortable. And there's a lot of tricks that I can give you that will prevent this from ever possibly happening, even, during, even in an accidental way. So it's really important that you understand these things. So the first thing when it comes to draping is to remember, you always want to expose the area being examined and nothing else. Now, in order to prevent you from making the patient uncomfortable and, and maneuvering the gown yourself, get the patient to move the gown up and down. So simply ask them when you want to, let's say, uh, do a, listen to the heart. Mrs. Jones, would you mind lowering your gown as far as you're comfortable so I can listen to your heart? You tell them why you want to do it too so that they know how far to go, right? Um, so when you say, I need to listen to your heart, they know, okay, I'm going to lower it down probably past my chest um, so that the doctor can ex get access to my entire chest. Most importantly, I think having the patient do this, aside from avoiding discomfort, prevents you from accidentally touching the patient inappropriately, even accidentally. Okay, that's very important. Now, a really important tip for the abdominal exam, which is going to be a lot easier for you to observe, and I'll show you when I do the abdominal exam um, demonstration, but is to lift the drape and have the patient pull up the gown to a comfortable level. Because you have to sort of carefully maneuver the drape in the gown when you want to expose the abdomen. The easiest way to do this is to lift the drape, which is across their thighs, and then say, Mrs. Jones, can you please pull up the gown as far as up as you're comfortable so I can uh, examine your abdomen? I'll show you how to do this. You might not understand when I'm explaining it, but you'll see that it's going to be a lot more uh, effective than you trying to do everything. Okay. Now, one last thing, always make sure the patient has a drape on their lap before you begin the encounter. Now, for the most part, the uh, SP has a drape on their lap when you walk into the room, but just double check to make sure they do so that you don't um, accidentally forget to drape them because that could cost you some points. Now, what should always be done? Now, one of the biggest problems students have with respect to the physical exam is knowing what should and should not be done. Now, using your time at the door is going to be really important for helping you to determine what physical exams need to be done. And that's going to help you alleviate stress because you don't have to think about it during the encounter. Now, always we should always do a basic heart and lung exam. That's a quick auscultation of the heart, check the pulses, and auscultate the lungs. Now, this is assuming we're not dealing with a cardio or a pulmonary case. So let's say it's an abdominal case. You'll do a quick heart and lung exam, and then you'll focus on the specific system. So in this case, it would be the abdominal system, or it might be a musculoskeletal, whatever it may be. That's how you sh should approach your physical. And I always suggest that you do the heart and lungs first so that you don't forget, because a lot of students will start with the focused area, so the system in, that you need to examine. And what happens is they sort of get, they lose track of time or they lose track of what they're doing, and then they forget the heart and lungs, and then they're missing some important components. So always do a basic heart and lungs. Now, what exactly does a focused exam mean? Well, it means that you're doing an exam that's thorough enough to provide you with the additional information that you need for the case. Now, it's very, very simple for the case, for the um, CS exam. All you need to do is the exact physical exam um, a strategy that you're going to find for each system. So for neuro, for HEENT, for MSK, for cardio, for pulmonary, 
for um, abdominal, for back, whatever it may be, you're always going to do the same thing no matter what type of uh, complaint the patient has. So it could be a variety of abdominal complaints. It could be a 29-year-old female with uh, epigastric pain, a 19-year-old girl with uh, right lower quadrant pain, a, a 75-year-old male with left lower quadrant pain. No matter what it is, you're always going to do the same exam, and that in that case would be the abdominal exam. So really, all you have to do is memorize how to do a handful of exams, not hundreds of exams. So when you understand that, it's going to make things a lot more simple for you. And we'll actually talk about the specific steps you should take for each system in the next lecture. Now, we can break the physical exam into smaller components, just like we did the history. We break it down with HPI, then review of systems, then past medical, then social we can also break down the physical exam. So here's a simple, simple physical exam breakdown strategy. Step one, ask permission to begin the physical exam. That's as soon as you're done asking the history component. Then you get up and wash your hands. Now remember, during the hand washing part, you should have a couple questions ready to ask your SP to build a little bit more rapport. Then when you're about to begin, tell them exactly what you're going to do and be sure to always get permission. Now with each different part of the exam, explain what you're doing so that they feel comfortable the entire time. So I'm just listening to your heart so that I can um, see if there's any issues there. I'm just going to examine your abdomen um, for any pain, for any changes in bowel sounds, etc. Then once you're finished, thank the SP for allowing you to perform the exam. So once you finish the basic heart exam, thank you Mrs. Jones for allowing me to listen to your heart. Then you're done the basic pulmonary exam. Thanks Mrs. Jones for allowing me to listen to your lungs. You're done the abdominal exam. Thank you, Mrs. Jones, for allowing me to examine your abdomen. And that's it. Now, how do you know which physical exam to perform? As I said, always a basic heart and lungs. Very simple. Listen to the heart, check the pulses, listen to the lungs. Okay. Focus your physical exam on the system related to the chief complaint. Remember, there's a ton of complaints that fall under only a handful of systems. Neuro, abdominal, uh, H-E-E-N-T, cardiovascular pulmonary. 99% of the time, you only need to focus on one system, meaning you'll do a basic heart, lungs, and abdomen, or you'll do a basic heart, lungs, and uh, musculoskeletal. On occasion, though, you might have to slip something else in there. For example, if we have a patient we suspect has mononucleosis, for example, um, they may have severe fatigue, they may have throat pain, and in this instance, a enlarged spleen is a concern, so you might just quickly go and palpate the spleen, but this is more of an exception than a rule. What do we need to do for each physical exam? So this is the focus physical exam. So assuming we have a cardiovascular case, we inspect and palpate, we auscultate, we auscultate the carotids, we check pulses, we check the PMI in left lateral decubitus position, and then we auscultate the carotids in the supine position. We also check for JVD, so make sure you jot that down. Respiratory system, you inspect, you palpate, you auscultate, you check for lung expansion, you do percussion, you do fremitus and you check for positive egophony for the neuro exam. Now, if there's a loss of consciousness or altered mental status, you're going to do the mini mental status exam. Otherwise, you don't have to. Then we do cranial nerves 2 to 12. We check sensation in the upper and lower extremities. We check for motor strength in the upper and lower extremities. And we do DTRs in the upper and lower extremities. We do an alternating hand test. We do the Romberg test to assess for balance. And then we check the patient's gait. And you'll see all of these um, when I do the actual physical exam demonstrations in a later lecture. For HEENT, inspect the head, palpate the lymph nodes, palpate the sinuses, look into the eyes, ears, and nose, look into the mouth, look at the throat, and then palpate the thyroid gland. For the abdomen, now this, if it's GU, if it's GI, if it's OBGYN, you're going to stick to the exact same abdominal exam. Now, this is the only time when the order in which you do things really matters, because if you start to palpate first, then you're going to ruin the auscultatory findings. Or if you palpate first, you could ruin the percussion findings. So start with inspection, then auscultate, then percuss, and then palpate last. Now on palpation, you want to watch for rebound tenderness. You want to assess for appendicitis with the Rob Singh psoas and obturator tests. And then you want to check Murphy's test for cholecystitis. And then once you're done and the patient sits up, do a quick check for costovertebral angle tenderness by gently tapping on both sides of the, of the um, flank. 
musculoskeletal. Now you'll see that this is going to be the same whether we are doing a elbow exam, a knee exam, an ankle exam. You're going to inspect and you're going to palpate. You're going to check range of motion on both sides. You want to compare the affected to the unaffected side. And then there's several special tests, and we'll discuss these a little bit later, but there's special tests for the knee, the shoulder, the back, and the wrist. Okay, we need to know those and we'll talk about those momentarily. Now, here's the special maneuvers for each system. For H-E-E-N-T, you have the Weber and the Rene tests. Then you have the Brzezinski and the Koenig test. Okay? The Weber and Rene are, of course, testing for whether it's conductive or sensory neural hearing loss. Brzezinski and Koenig are testing for, um, sense for pain in the uh, neck, which we look for in meningitis. Now, the knee, they have the Belotment test, checking for uh, fluid accumulation, the McMurray test, anterior posterior drawer, and varus and valgus stress tests. We'll show you how to do those shortly. In the wrist, we have the Phelan and the Tinnel test. In the shoulder, we have the, or either the arm drop or the open can test. And then for the back, we have the straight leg test. As long as you know these special maneuvers, you're going to get full points on your exam because this is the vast majority of what you need to do. Now, documenting your findings is of the utmost importance. And even though some students don't value its importance, it is super important. You have to work on becoming very fast and very efficient at typing the normal physical exam findings. So what this means is after your history component, but before your differentials, you have physical exams. Now for the vast majority of the time, it's always going to be normal findings with maybe one or two slight abnormalities. So you want to learn the proper way to document, which is on the next slides. And I want you to practice typing it over and over and over again until you can type it out super, super fast without thinking. And the reason why you want to be able to do this is because when it comes to writing your note, you don't want to waste time on trying to think of the physical findings and what you have to write. It should just be automatic, like typing your name. So that's extremely important. So I'm not going to walk you through each one of these, but make sure you review this when you're studying. You want to know how to document the normal findings for H-E-N-T, for neuro, for respiratory, for the CVS system, cardiovascular system, for the abdomen, for MSK, and for the extremities. Okay. Now, you, it's important that you practice typing those over and over and over again. Like I said, it wants, you want it to be almost second nature. Now, here's what I want you to do for today's homework. Practice writing your normal physical exam findings. Try to write it, write out each type, so each system, at least five times. That should give you a good, solid foundation so that as you continue to study and work and prepare, it's a little bit easier for you each time. And then take exam number seven, go over the exam, see where you made your mistakes, and then make sure you don't make those in the future.